Hello everybody, how it's going? All is right, all is good, all is nice, yes, <laughs> is all nice. Yes, today we're gonna talk about an interesting topic, the agriculture revolution, crash court world history. It is fair use of content of crash course. Crash course, it is one of the coolest, biggest and interesting channel about uh, knowledge, about education and uh, I want to improve my English because I'm a Russian man, I'm uh, right now locating on uh, St. Petersburg, it is the uh, north uh, capital of uh, Russia and uh, also culture capital and uh, I want to improve my English. How do, uh, how do I want to do this? I want to I want to react to videos, I want to comment them and after that uh, my uh, neural networks will connect it together and my words will be like a, like a paths, like a roads and uh, I will have more imagination in my mind uh, by using different videos. Did you understand me? I hope yes. It is fair use of content. It is not like a, I want to... Uh, I, I'm not a I, I'm not a burglar. I I am using this content only for educational purposes. Okay, let's do this. Thanks for this channel crash course. You can su subscribe to them. Okay, let's do. Hello, learned and astonishingly attractive pupils. My name is John Green, and I want to welcome you to Crash Course World History. Over the next 40 weeks together, we will learn how in a mere 15,000 years, humans went from hunting and Mr. gathering... Green, Mr. Green, Mr. Green, is, is, is this going to be on the test? Yeah, about the test. The test will measure whether you are an informed, engaged, and productive citizen of the world. And it will take place in schools and mm -hmm. bars and hospitals and dorm rooms and in places of worship. You will be tested on first dates, in job interviews, while watching football and while scrolling through your Twitter feed. The test will judge your ability to think about things other than celebrity marriages, whether you'll be easy... Yes, need to think about other things, not only about celebrities' uh, weddings. And I, uh, I noticed uh, this acting, acting game of uh, this person, Mr. Green. He started uh, to speak and he was like, okay, I will speak uh, normally, I will speak nice and slow, and after that, this person, annoying person, hey, Mr. Green, Mr. Green, and after that uh, was voice of aggressive person. Okay, let's uh, do this, uh, let's continue. Easily persuaded by empty political rhetoric and whether you'll be able to place your life and your community in a broader context. The test will last your entire life and it will be comprised of the millions of decisions that when taken together make your life yours and everything everything will be on it i know right so pay attention i really like this um, this preview arrow slits we were cut in the tower wall to let archers fire while under protection oh. england introduced a surname in 1066 se and knights were expected to bring multiple horses with them while on campaign. Did you know Richard uh, the Lionheart? Lionheart Richard! I played a Stronghold game and uh, I had L L Richard Lionheart, the Lin Lionheart, had command of his own army at the age of 16. Okay. It looks like a Big Bang Theory preview. In a mere 15,000 years, humans went from hunting and gathering to creating such improbabilities as the airplane, the internet, and the 99-cent double cheeseburger. It's an extraordinary journey, double one that I will now symbolize by embarking upon a journey of my own. Over to camera two. Hi there, camera two. It's me, John Green. Let's start with that double cheeseburger. Oh, food photography. So this hot hunk of meat contains 490 calories. To get mm, this cheeseburger, you have to feed, raise, and slaughter cows, then grind their meat, then freeze it and ship it to its destination. You also gotta grow some wheat and then process the living crap out of it until it's whiter than Queen Elizabeth the first. Then you gotta milk some cows and turn their milk into cheese. And that's not even to mention the growing and pickling of cucumbers or the sweetening of tomatoes or the grinding of mustard seeds, etc. How in the sweet name of everything holy did we ever come to live in a world in which such a thing can even be created? And how 
how is it possible that those 490 calories can be served to me for an amount of money that if I make the minimum wage here in the US, I can earn in 11 minutes? And most importantly, should I be delighted or alarmed to live in this strange world of relative abundance? Well, Okay, I want to clarify what uh, did uh, he say. Yes, uh, and uh, I will clarify to improve my speaking skills. He said about uh, agricultural revolution that uh, day by day it was uh, growing, but right now we have uh, something that uh, before we were like a fairy tale. Before it was fairy tale and uh, double cheeseburger it was like something uh, something that everybody didn't know and uh, double cheeseburger right now has calories uh, that uh, will improve your your uh, no double cheeseburger has calories and uh, that calories much are much bigger than something that was before and uh, to to gain these calories you only need to work uh, 13 or 12 minutes okay let's continue i hope that i understood right if you if you are not native if you are native uh, please uh, write in the comment section what do you think about it and uh, after every my speaking Parts. To answer that question, we're not going to be able to look strictly at history because there isn't a written record about a lot of these things. But thanks to archaeology and paleobiology, we can look deep into the past. Let's go to the thought bubble. So 15,000 years ago, humans were foragers and hunters. Foraging meant gathering fruits, nuts, also wild grains and grasses. Hunting allowed for a more protein-rich diet. Forager so is collector. collector. To kill. By far the best hunting gig in the prehistoric world, incidentally, was fishing. Which is one of the reasons that if you look at the history of people populating the planet, we tend to run for the shore and then stay there. Marine life was A, abundant, and B, relatively unlikely to eat you. While we tend to think that the lives of foragers were nasty, brutish, and short, fossil evidence suggests that they actually had it pretty good. Their bones and teeth are healthier than those of agriculturalists, and anthropologists who've studied the remaining forager peoples have noted that they actually spend a lot fewer hours working than the rest of us, and they spend more time on art, music, and storytelling. Also, if you believe the classic of anthropology, Nisa, they also have a lot more time for scoodily pooping. What? I call it scoodily pooping. I'm not going to apologize. Scoodily pooping? It's worth noting that cultivation of crops seems to have arisen independently over the course of millennia in a number of places, from Africa to China to the Americas, using crops that naturally grew nearby, rice in Southeast Asia, maize in Mexico, potatoes in the Andes, wheat in the Fertile Crescent, yams in West Africa. He said about uh special places uh, when we can find specific and uh, many of plenty of food for example in china we can find rice in uh, africa potato and for example in moscow we can find matryoshka Africa, people around the world began to abandon their foraging for agriculture. And since so many communities made this choice independently, it must have been a good choice, right? Even though it meant less music and scootily pooping. Thanks, Thought Bubble. All right, to answer that question, let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of agriculture. Advantage, controllable food supply. You might have droughts or floods, but if you're growing the crops and breeding them to be hardier, you have a better chance of not starving. Disadvantage, in order to keep feeding people as the population grows, you have to radically change the environment of the planet. Advantage, especially if you grow grain, you can create a food surplus, which makes cities possible and also the specialization of labor, like in the days before agriculture, everybody's job was foraging, and it took about a thousand calories of work to create a thousand calories of food. And it was impossible to create large population centers, but if you have a surplus, agriculture can support people not directly involved in the production of food. Like, for instance, tradespeople who can devote their lives to better farming equipment, which in turn makes it easier to produce more food more efficiently, which in time makes it possible for a corporation to turn a profit on this 99 cent double cheeseburger. This is delicious, by the way. It's actually terrible. And it's very cold. And I wish that I had not eaten it. I mean, can we just compare what I was promised to what I was delivered? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is not 
That. I have salima on my mouth. Cities and eventually inexpensive meat sandwiches are not necessarily beneficial to the planet or even to its human inhabitants. Although that's a bit of a tough argument to make coming to you as I am in a series of ones and zeros. Advantage, agriculture can be practiced all over the world, although in some cases it takes extensive manipulation of the environment, like, you know, irrigation, controlled flooding, terracing, that kind of thing. Disadvantage, farming is hard. So hard, in fact, that one is tempted to claim ownership over other humans and then have them till the land on your behalf, which is the kind of non-ideal social order that tends to be associated with agricultural communities. So why... Okay, this talk about that uh, agriculture is good because you can use agriculture to provide more healthy food, but in the same time, agriculture is uh, really hard to is really hard work to to collect more values from nature why did agriculture happen wait, wait i haven't talked about herders herders man always getting the short herders. end of the stick herding is a really good and interesting alternative to foraging and agriculture you domesticate some animals and then you take them on the road oh, the advantages of herding it are is... obvious first you get to be a cowboy animals. also animals provide meat and milk but they also help out with shelter because they can provide wool and leather the downside is that you have to move around a lot because your herd always needs new grass which makes it hard to build cities unless you are the mongols <laughs> By the way, over the next 40 weeks, you will frequently hear generalizations followed by, unless you are the Mongols. But anyway, one of the main reasons herding only caught on in certain parts of the world is that there are... Herding is process of uh, creating animals, domestic animals, and uh, gain food from them that many animals that lend themselves to domestication. Like you have sheep, goats, cattle, pigs, horses, camels, donkeys, reindeer, water buffalo, yaks, all of which have something reindeer. in common. They aren't native to the Americas. The only halfway useful herding animal native to the Americas is the llama. No, not that llama. Two L's. Yes, that llama. Most animals just don't work for domestication. Like hippos are large, which means they provide lots of meat, but unfortunately they like to eat people. <laughs> Zebras are too ornery. Grizzlies have wild hearts that can't be broken. Elephants are awesome, but they take way too long to breed. Which reminds me, it's time for the open letter. Elegant. But first, let's see what the secret compartment has for me today. Oh. It's another double cheeseburger. A Thanks, cheese. secret compartment. Just kidding. I don't thank you for this. An open letter to elephants. Hey, elephants, you're so cute and smart and awesome. Why you gotta be pregnant for 22 months? That's crazy. And then you only have one kid. If you were more like cows, you might have taken us over by now. Little did you know, but the greatest evolutionary advantage? Being useful to humans. Like here is a graph of cow population, and here is a graph of elephant population. Elephants, if you just inserted yourself into human life the way cows did, you could have used your power and intelligence to form secret elephant societies conspiring against the humans. And then you could have risen up and destroyed us and made an awesome elephant world with elephant cars and elephant planes. It would have been so great, but no, you gotta be pregnant for 22 months and then have just one kid. It's so annoying. Best wishes. John Green. Right, but back to the agricultural revolution and why it occurred. Historians don't know for sure, of course. I didn't know that uh, pregnancy of an elephant uh, takes uh, 22 months. Interesting fact to me. Because there are no written records, but they love to make guesses. Maybe population pressure necessitated agriculture, even though it was more work, or abundance gave people leisure to experiment with domestication, or planting originated as a fertility right, or, as some historians have argued, people needed to domesticate grains in order to produce more alcohol. Charles Darwin, like most 19th century scientists, believed agriculture was an accident, saying, a wild and unusually good variety of native plant might attract the attention of some wise old savage. Savage. Off topic, but you will note in the coming weeks that the definition of savage tends to be not me. Maybe the best theory is that there wasn't really an agricultural revolution at all, but that agriculture came out of an evolutionary desire to eat more. Like, early hunter-gatherers knew that seeds germinate when planted, and when you find something that makes food, you want to do more of it. Unless it's just food, then you want to do less of it. I kind of want to spit it out. Oop. 
Oh, that's much better. So early farmers would find the most accessible forms of wheat and plant them and experiment with them, not because they were trying to start an agricultural revolution, because they were like, you know what would be awesome? More food. Like on this topic, we have evidence that more than 13,000 years ago, humans in southern Greece were domesticating snails. In the Franchi cave, there's a huge pile of snail shells. Most of them are larger than current snails, suggesting that the people who ate them were selectively breeding them to be bigger and more nutritious. Snails make excellent domesticated food sources, by the way, because A, surprisingly caloric, B, they're easy to carry since they come with their own suitcases, and C, to imprison them, you just have to scratch a ditch around their living quarters. That's not really a revolution, that's just people trying to increase available calories. But one non-revolution leads to another, and pretty soon you have this, as far as the eye can see. Many historians also argue that without agriculture we wouldn't have all the bad things that come with complex civilizations like patriarchy, inequality, war, and unfortunately famine. And as far as the planet is concerned, agriculture has been a big loser. Without it, humans never would have changed the environment so much. Building dams and clearing forests and more recently drilling for oil that we can turn into fertilizer. Many people made the choice for agriculture independently, but does that mean it was the right choice? Maybe so and maybe not, but regardless, we can't unmake that choice. And that's one of the reasons I think it's so important to study history. History reminds us that revolutions are not events so much as they're processes, that for tens of thousands of years, people have been making decisions that irrevocably shaped the world that we live in today. Just as today we're making subtle, irrevocable decisions that people of the future will remember as revolutions. Next week, we're gonna journey to the Indus River Va Whoa, it's very fragile, our globe like the real globe. We're gonna to travel to the Indus River Valley. I'll see you then. Crash Course is produced and directed by Stan Muller. Our script supervisor is Danica Johnson. The show is written by my high school history teacher, Raul Meyer, and myself, and our graphics team is Thought Bubble. If you wanna guess at the phrase of the week, you can do so in comments. You can also suggest future phrases of the week. And if you have a question about today's video, please leave it in comments where our team of semi-professional quasi-historians will aim to answer it. Thanks for watching, and as we say in my hometown, don't forget to be awesome. Don't forget to be awesome. Okay, what have I learned from this video? Right now we'll be talk about this video. We learned information about uh, agriculture, that it was uh, like a collecting plants. It was like a domestication of uh, animals. It was uh, special. It was special hunting to animals on forests or um, jungles and in different countries we have different traditions to do this for and different uh, cultures and uh, different uh, animals we have to also interesting fact uh, what i learned was about uh, cheeseburger that cheeseburger has uh, 400 calories uh, and it is uh, 30 minutes to earn to earn it uh, by money, yes, and else effect about 22 days of pregnancy of uh, our elephant. Also, we can watch it again. Hello, from, Garnet. From, from the beginning, we can watch it from the beginning and uh, learn it uh, step by step, sentence by sentence. If you want, you can off this video. You, it was uh, useful information from 18 minutes and right now I will learn it uh, step by step like uh, every 30 seconds I will stop it to learn uh, every each sentence uh, to improve our whole comprehension. Let's do this by uh, one moment. Uh, I will duplicate our scene like this way and here one moment. It will be this huge screen and it will be here. Okay, and we are here. One moment, yes, I will be less. Oh, geez, maybe here. Need to look at here. Okay, let's do this together. Hello, learned and astonishingly attractive peoples. Okay, he's he spoke about that we are nice and cool. My name is John Green and I want and to... astonishingly attractive pupils. My name is John Green and I want to welcome you to Crash Course World History. Over the next 40 weeks together we will... It is like introduction that uh, our course started and uh, it will... it will last for 
40 weeks. Learn how in a mere 15,000 mere 15,000 years. Mere, it is maybe like a distance. Years, humans went from hunting and Mr. gathering. Green, Mr. Green, Mr. Green, is, is this going to be on the test? Yeah, about the test. The test will measure whether you are an informed, engaged, and productive citizen of the world. And it will take place in schools and bars and hospitals and dorm rooms and in places of worship. You okay, and uh, how about uh, our test? And uh, he said, like, a test will be, but test will be not like a physical text te test. It will be your understanding of the world and to, it will help you it will help you really it will really help you you will be tested on first dates in job interviews while watching football and while scrolling through your twitter feed the test will judge your ability to think about things other than celebrity marriages whether you'll be easily persuaded by empty the political rhetoric and whether you'll be able to place your life and your community in a broader context. The te test will last your entire life and it will be comprised of the millions of decisions that when taken together make your life yours and everything, everything will be on it. I know, right? So pay, pay attention. And uh, he said like, uh, haul your life to the rest of your life this knowledge will be helpful to you. Oh, my rice is cooked. One moment, agriculture thing. Let's learn. Oh, Jesus. Aha, again, I lost information. In a mere 15,000 years, humans went from hunting and gathering to creating such improbabilities as the airplane, the internet, and the 99 cent double cheeseburger. It okay, he said like a mirror, mirror it is our line, line of time. And uh, all changed, change, uh, everything changes. It's an extraordinary journey, one that I will now symbolize by embarking upon a journey of my own. Oh. Okay. It's an extraordinary journey, one that I will now symbolize. One that I will now symbolize by embarking upon a journey of my own over to camera two hi there camera two. and he said like uh, he can see this from his own life to it's me john green let's start with that double cheeseburger oh food photography so this hot hunk of meat contains 490 calories to get this cheeseburger you have to feed raise and slaughter cows then grind their meat then freeze it and ship it to its destination you also got to grow some wheat and then process the Okay, and uh, right now he said that uh, to provide cheeseburger, you should uh, you should uh, feed cows, raise them, slaughter, then grind their meat, then freeze it, and, and then grind grind meat from them, freeze after that to protect it from from biological. Biological uh, improvements and non improvements, I don't know, changes from biological changes. And ship it, ship it means uh, that it will be locate, it will be dislocation from one point to another, from A to B. And ship it to its destination. You also got to grow some wheat and then process the living crap out of it until it's whiter than Queen Elizabeth the first. Then you got to milk some cows and turn their milk into cheese, and that's not even. Okay, this part is about uh, that you can use uh, your milk uh, to create cheese. Even to mention the growing and pickling of cucumbers or the sweetening of tomatoes or the grinding of mustard seeds, it's... Mustard. Interesting. Mustard, it is special. Oh, mustard may be spicy. Etc. How in the sweet name of everything holy did we ever come to live in a world in which such a thing can even be created how in this how in the sweet name of everything holy did we ever come to live in a world sweet name of everything holy did we ever come to live in a world in which such a thing can even be created such a thing and how is it possible that those 490 calories can be served to me for an amount of money that if i 
I make the minimum wage here in the U.S. I can earn in 11 minutes. And most importantly, should I be delighted or alarmed to live in this strange world of relative abundance? Well, he said about uh, problems in life, or maybe it is not problems, it is advantage. To answer that question, we're not going to be able to look strictly at history because there isn't a written record about Strictly, maybe. So staring, staring to history. A lot of these things, but thanks to archaeology and paleobiology, we can can look deep into the past. Let's go to the thought bubble. So 15,000 years ago, humans were foragers and hunters. Foragers are collecting seeds, fruits, vegetables, and uh, hunters are using their weapons to kill somebody and to gain meat from them. Foraging meant gathering fruits, nuts, also wild grains and grasses. Hunting allowed for a more protein-rich diet, so long as you could... <laughs> protein... <laughs> diets. ...find something with meat to kill. By far the best hunting gig in the prehistoric world, incidentally, was fishing. Which is one of the reasons that if you look at the history of people populating the planet, we tended to run for the shore and then stay there. Shore. Shore means... Uh, place near water. Marine life was A, abundant, and B, relatively unlikely to eat you. Well, we tend to think that the lives of foragers were... Tend to think that uh, the life of foragers were nasty, brutish, and short. Nasty, brutish, and short. Nasty, it means uh, not clean. Brutish, maybe like a hard and short. Hmm, it is length. Short, like uh, it is long, it is short. Fossil evidence suggests that they actually had it pretty good. Their bones and teeth are healthier than those of agriculturalists, and anthropologists who've studied the remaining forager peoples have noted that they actually spend a lot fewer hours working than the rest of us. I have noted that they actually spend a lot. And they spend more time on art, music, and storytelling. Also, if you believe that... Uh. And uh, anthropo anthropologists learned that uh, this kind of people, for foragers, foragers spend not so much time to to forage or to hunt. They were they were spending time to create artistic works and to create like a legacy classic of anthropology nisa they also have a lot more time for scoodily scoodily pooping pooping what i call it scoodily pooping i'm not going to apologize it's worth noting that cultivation of crops seem scoodily pooping what is scoodily pooping need to google it one moment google translate school Okay. I'm sorry we were late. Are you sure you weren't scoodly pooping? To have sex. Okay. Scoodly pooping. Seems to have arisen independently over the course of millennia in a number of places, from Africa to China to the Americas, using crops that naturally grew nearby, rice. Crops. It is grains. In Southeast Asia, maize in Mexico, potatoes in the Andes, wheat in the Fertile Crescent, yams in West Africa. Yams, yams. Africa. People around the world began to abandon their foraging for agriculture. And since so many... Abandoned their foraging for agriculture. Many communities made this... Ah, foraging means... Uh, Foraging, it is collecting something from wild nature, and agriculture, it is collecting something from... It is collecting crops, grains, from doing, doing it by your own. ...choice independently. It must have been a good choice, right? even though it meant less music and scootily pooping. Thanks, Thought Bubble. All right, to answer that question, let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of agriculture. Advantage, controllable food supply. You might have droughts or 
controllable food supply. Supply, it is uh, creating demand. It is uh, like what people want. Floods, but if you're growing the crops, agriculture. Advantage, controllable food supply. You might have droughts or... Or floods. Floods, but if you're growing the crops and breeding... I think that advantage can droughts and or floods it is uh, maybe special garden controllable food supply you might have droughts or floods but if you're growing the crops and breeding them to be hardier you have a harder to be hardier better chance of not starving disadvantage in order to keep feeding ah, it is uh, our advantages and disadvantages of agriculture if we will compare a compare agriculture and uh, that process of, uh, I forget, of, uh, of foraging. In order to keep feeding people as in order to keep feeding people as the population, the population grows, you have to radically change the environment of the planet. Advantage. And the disadvantage is that you will kill planet. Especially if you grow grain, you can create a food surplus, which makes cities a food surplus. Surplus. Surplus, I don't know what. These possible and also the specialization of labor. Like in the days before agriculture, everybody's job was foraging and it took about a thousand calories of work to create a thousand calories of food. And it was impossible to create large population centers. But if you have a surplus, agriculture can support people not directly involved in the production of food. Like Ah, surplus means that you have like a farms Yes, and uh, you can provide uh, food without uh, without uh, working, without working of uh, some person. You can have uh, a family of one person, no, of ten person, and uh, on this family, two person of ten can work, and. Uh, Eight, for example, will be art creators. Then you will have surplus, and uh, this surplus will feed that ten person of family persons, while workers was only two persons. Yes. For instance, tradespeople who can devote their lives to better farming equipment, which in turn makes it easier to produce more food, more if. Okay, and right now they are, they have, also equipment, special equipment. Efficiently, which in time makes it possible for a corporation to turn a profit on this ninety-nine cent double cheeseburger. This is delicious, by the way. It's actually terrible. This is the mission to turn a profit on this 99 cent double cheeseburger. 99 cent double cheeseburger. 99 cent. Okay. This is delicious, by the way. It's actually terrible. And it's very cold. And I wish that I had not eaten it. I mean, can we just compare what I was promised to what I was delivered? Cold. And I wish that I had not eaten it. I mean, I mean can we just compare what I was promise to what I was delivered I mean can we just compare what I was promised yeah thank you yeah this is not that some would say that ah he said uh, that on picture maybe it was more interesting looking large and complex agricultural communities that can support cities and eventually Inexpensive meat sandwiches are not necessarily beneficial to the planet or even to its human inhabitants. Although that's a bit of a tough argument. Necessarily beneficial to the planet or even to its human inhabitants. Although that's a bit. He said that uh, fast food not uh, fast food is not good food for uh, your health, for inhabitants and also for planet. Bit of a tough argument. Tough argument means that it is really good argument to make coming to you as I am in a series of ones and zeros. Advan 
series of ones and zeros, it is uh, like a joke about uh, computer era. Agriculture can be practiced all over the world, although in some cases it takes extensive manipulation of the environment, like, you know, irrigation, controlled flooding, terracing, that kind of thing. Disadvantage, farming is hard. So hard, in fact, that one is tempted to claim ownership over... Farming is hard. So hard, in fact, that one is tempted to claim ownership over other humans and then have them till the land on your behalf, which is the kind of non-ideal social order that tends to be associated with agricultural communities. All right, now he said about that uh, new era. It is era of uh, agriculture farms. And farms can provide really big value to society with... Uh, big amount of food big amount of food but uh, to provide it somebody should work on that and uh, nobody wants to work so hard on farms and to to solve these problems our managers of farms should pick some maybe black people to work on them black workers it is a non-ideal social relationships. So why did agriculture happen? Wait, wait, I haven't talked about herders. Herders, man, always getting the short end of the... Herders, herders... Maybe it is... Uh, I don't know who is. A stick. Herding is a really... really ...good and interesting alternative to foraging. Ah, herding, herding it is uh, creating creating domestic animal. In agriculture, you domesticate some animals and then you take them on the road with you. The advantages of herding are obvious. First, you get to be a cowboy. Also, animals provide meat and milk, but they also help out with shelter because they can provide wool and leather. The downside is that you have to move around a lot because your herd... Your herd? Herd means... Uh, your herd, herd, it is... Uh, amount of... Uh, it's like a tribe, tribe but animals. Always needs new grass, which makes it hard to build cities unless you are the Mongols. By the way, over the next 40 weeks, you will frequently hear generalizations followed by unless you are the Mongols. Unless but anyway, one of the main reasons hurting only caught... But anyway, one of the main reasons hurting only caught on in certain parts of the world. Caught on in certain parts of the world is that there aren't that many animals that lend themselves to domestication. Like you have sheep, goats, cattle, pigs, horses, camels, donkeys, reindeer. Reindeer, what is? It is... Ah, reindeer, it is... Caribou in North American. It is deer, but it is domestic deer, yes? water buffalo, yaks, all of which have something in common. They aren't native to the Americas. The only halfway useful herding animal native to the Americas is the llama. No. Llama, it is joke right now, will be llama with the first double L. Not that llama. Two L's. Yes, that llama. Most animals just don't work for domestication. Just don't work for domestication. Like hippos are large, which means they provide lots of meat, but unfortunately they like to eat people. Zebras are too ornery. Grizzly. Zebras are too ornery. Ornery. What is ornery? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it is uh, terrible. Please have wild hearts that can't be broken. Elephants are awesome, but they take way too long to breed. Which reminds me, it's time for the open letter. Open letter. It is special. Uh, it is a special. Uh, what's what's special? Special time on this TV show. Elegant. But first, let's see what the secret compartment has for me today. Oh, it's another double cheeseburger. Thanks, secret compartment. Just kidding. I don't need this. An open letter to elephants. 
Hey, elephants, you're so cute and smart and awesome. Why you gotta be pregnant for 22 months? That's crazy. And then you only have one kid. If you were more like cows, you might have taken us over by now. Little did you know, but the greatest ever. Little did you know. Little did you know, it means that maybe at least evolutionary advantage being useful to humans like here is a graph of cow population he's trying to create evidence of uh, elephants that elephants are useful for people if uh, they if they will be less if they will have less pregnancy time and here is a graph of here is a graph of cow population elephant population elephants if you just inserted yourself into human life the way cows did you could have if you had just inserted yourself used your power and intelligence to form secret elephant societies conspiring against the humans and then you could have risen up and destroyed us and made an awesome elephant world with elephant cars and elephant planes. It would have been so great, but no, you got to be pregnant for 22 months and then have just one kid. It's so annoying. But uh, if we will create something in our society that we can create uh, not by nature elephants, if we will create not by nature elephant, it will be so valuable to mankind. But it is a mad, a mad thought. Best wishes, John Green. Right, but back to the agricultural revolution and why. But back. Why it occurred. Historians don't. Back to the agricultural revolution. Don't know for sure, of course, because there are no written records, but they love to make guesses. Maybe population pressure necessitated. Ag Maybe population pressure necessitated agriculture, even though it was more work agriculture even though it was more work or abundance gave people leisure to experiment with domestication or planting originated as a fertility right or as some historians have argued people needed to domesticate grains in order to produce more alcohol charles darwin like most 19th century scientists believed agriculture was an accident saying a wild and unusually good variety of native plant might attract the attention of some wise old savage off topic but you will note in the coming weeks that the definition of savage tends to be not me. Maybe the best theory is that there wasn't really an agricultural revolution at all, but that agriculture came out of an evolutionary desire to eat more. Like, early hunter-gatherers knew that seeds germinate when planted, and when you find something that makes food, you want to do more of it. Unless it's just food, then you want to do less of it. You want to do less of it. I kind of want to spit it out. Oop. Oh, that's much better. So early farmers would find the most accessible forms of wheat and plant them and experiment with them, not because they were trying to start an agricultural revolution, because they were like, you know what would be awesome? More food. Like on this topic, we have evidence that more than 13,000 thousand years ago, humans in southern Greece were domesticating snails. In the Oh, interesting fact, I didn't understand it in first view, that uh, people from Greece were domesticated snails. And after that we will have a uh, fact about uh, snail, snail houses. Frank the snail cave, there's a huge pile of snail... French and cave was consciously inhabited by humans for over 20,000 years. Snail shells, most of them are larger than current snails, suggesting that the people who ate them were selectively breeding them to be bigger and more nutritious. Snails make excellent domesticated food sources, by the way, because A, surprisingly caloric, B, they're easy to... Surprisingly caloric, they are easy to carry since they carry can. since they come with their own suitcases, and C, to imprison them, you just have to scratch a ditch around their living quarters. Ah, oh, it is prison, in in prison. And C to imprison. In prison, in prison, it is a process of making barriers. Prison them, you just have to scratch a ditch around their living quarters. Ditch, it is a special, 
special tool, I don't know, it is a special road, a special road, a road barrier, it is, uh, it is like a dig, digged, digged means that I used a special tool to create, <laughs> to create ditch, ditch it is, if we will see on our earth, and we will dig with our tools small I need to google it, what's the name of it? one moment pit pit small pit or hole, hole yes small pit or hole and you will have you will have ditch, ditch this lengthen hole that's not really a revolution, that's just people trying to increase available calories. But one non-revolution leads to another, and pretty soon you have this, as far as the eye can see. Many historians also argue that without agriculture... We I also argue that without agriculture we wouldn't have all the We wouldn't have things. all the bad things that come with complex civilizations like patriarchy... Patriarchy? Inequality... Inequality... Patriarchy, maybe. One moment. What is patriarchy? Patriarchy. Ah, means that uh, only for men. Inequality, it is uh, like a black person, not good. Yes, inequality, it is when we have unequal war and unfortunately famine and as far as the planet is concerned agriculture has been a big loser without it humans never would have changed organizations like patriarch wouldn't have all the bad agriculture wouldn't have bad things that come with complex civilizations like patriarchy inequality war and unfortunately famine and as far as the planet is concerned Agriculture has been a big loser. Without it, humans never would have changed the environment so much. Building dams and clearing forests and more recently drilling for oil that... Drilling for oil that... ...can turn into fertilizer. Many people made the choice for... ...agriculture independently, but does that mean it was the right choice? Maybe so, and maybe not. But regardless, we can't unmake that choice. And that's one of the reasons I think it's so important to study history. History reminds us that revolutions are not events so much as they're processes. That for tens of thousands of years, people have been making decisions that irrevocably shaped the world that we live in today. Just as today we're making subtle, irrevocable decisions that people of the future will remember as revolutions. Next oh, Jesus. He said really correct words so that maybe... Our daily decisions are making, yes, it is not maybe, our daily decisions make world better or worse. Next week we're going to journey to the Indus River, Va whoa, it's very fragile, our globe, like the real globe. We're going to travel to the Indus River Valley. So we're going to travel like Indus River Valley. I'll see you then. Oh, it is uh, speech about future episode of this Crash Course. Crash Course is produced and directed by Stan Muller. Our script supervisor is Danica Johnson. The show is written by my high school history teacher, Raul Meyer, and myself, okay. and our graphics. On second, a second view of this Crash Course, I learned much more, much more than in first viewing. From second view, I learned more about that uh, agriculture revolution can change our life and our daily decisions are making our life uh, better or worse. And uh, patriarchy, patriarchy, inequality, wars and famine are 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 products of uh, agriculture and history helps us to understand these problems much more better.
practice what I learned else about shells, snail shells from uh, from Greece caves. Also herding, yes, I learn, and uh, that's all, nothing else. Things uh, no was some small some small topics, but uh, I learned more vocabulary from this topic and I can speak about this topic right now, right now or after some days, because I have new knowledge and we will continue our journey of learning English. It was really interesting to learn the agriculture revolution by crash course. Thanks so much for them. Thanks so much for their channel. It is my first video reaction to their videos, but I hope that uh, after maybe 10 videos I will create more vocabulary in my, in my mind, because uh, every topic contains specific vocabulary. For example, history contains historical vocabulary, economy contains uh, economic uh, vocabulary, and the more we speak about specific topic, the more vocabulary we will have. First video ga gave me, first video gave me maybe 45% of that vocabulary, of history vocabulary. And after next view, I will have 55%. After next, 60. Next, 62, 64, 66. And after maybe 10 videos, I will have 70% of vocabulary of, histo of history. I know about it. It, uh, it is my thought about it. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. It, it, if it was helpful for you to understand something, something, thanks. If you are native and you are watching me, thanks a lot too, because you can see how my mind works. And if you are not native, if you are learning English too, it helps you too, because you have a friend to learn it together. Thanks a lot. I hope you, uh, you enjoyed it and I gave you value. Thanks. See you next time. Bye bye. And uh, don't forget that all depends only on you. And the, the harder you practice, the more value you will have in total. Bye bye.